Hey, thanks for checking out Finite State Inspector, a utility I've created for Unity 3D to help me manage finite state machines in my games. If you're unfamiliar with state machines, you should head over to the Wikipedia and check them out because they can be very useful in creating complex behaviors for your game entities. FSI is largely inspired from the state machine implementation you can find on the Unity Wiki. FSI, however, has the advantage that you can manage your state transition targets easily from within the inspector. FSI is not to be mistaken with a more general visual programming language like Uscript or Playmaker. Game logic is still implemented wholly in code, but you have the convenience of wiring your transitions through a simple editor interface. Hopefully in this video we can demonstrate this benefit. In this demo, we'll be creating a classic first-person shooter aiming rectangle. In such games, the rectangle size will change depending on whether or not the player is firing their weapon as an indication of the gun's recoil and accuracy. The first thing that we'll need to do is create a GUI texture for the rectangle. We'll go ahead and rename that and select the texture. I've already got one picked up. Oops. Try that again. Okay, that looks a little funny, so let's resize that by giving some defaults in the pixel inset. 16 should do. Okay, so we can see our base rectangle here in the game interface. The first thing that we need to do to make our rectangle change in size is add the FSI system component to the rectangle. You can see the inspector interface here. We can see that the FSI system starts out with a pretty minimal interface and we can't s specify a first state yet because we haven't added any. The add state drop down will list any FSI states in your project that you haven't already used. We can see that we already have some pre-made states including two for a rectangle. Before we add them, let's take a look at what an FSA state looks like. Here we have the FSI state uh, class definition. If we scroll down, we can see that it has four methods. Um, we have two setup and teardown uh, methods that are called once uh, when the state is entered and when the state is exited. You can do uh, any setup or cleanup that you need to do in these two methods. Uh, these two abstract methods are the main logic for your state. The reason considers the conditions for when the transitions should take place. So an example would be uh, if your game entity is in a patrolling state, if the player gets within a certain distance, it would transition to a follow state. The act method is for implementing per frame behavior for the state. So if they're chasing the player, it's the function that moves the NPC towards the player. Um, at the top of the file, I'll just mention that we have two uh, system.attributes that are defined, and we'll take a look at those in a second. Uh, before we hop back to Unity, let's just quickly take a look at um, one of the example rectile states just to see how it's set up. We can see that the rectile idle class is derived from FSI state and you'll notice that it is decorated with a state doc string attribute. And this is uh, a useful feature in that if you provide these attributes this string will show up in the inspector um, providing some sort of inline documentation right inside of the editor interface. Down here we can see we have a public member of uh, FSI state type and what this is is the actual transition point um, being defined in the class. You'll notice that it too is decorated with an attribute, this time state transition. Um, for the state transitions you must decorate the members with this attribute. This is how the system introspects your class to list the transition points in the ed editor interface. Um, it also takes an optional doc string that will also appear in the editor interface as we'll see in a moment. Then you have your regular uh, mono behavior configurable um, attributes. 
Um, in this case, for the rectile states, we have the size that the GUI texture pixel inset should be resized to. Normally, your states behavior would be implemented in the ACT method. However, we only need to change the size of the GU GUI texture once, so instead we're utilizing the do before entering method. Uh, the reason method uh, for this state is very simple. It simply checks whether the left mouse button is pressed, and if it is, it transitions to its on fire transition. So the class doesn't know what state that transition will transition to, it just knows the condition under which that transition should take place. We actually specify which state it goes to later in the um, inspector interface. So right now let's go back to the Unity editor and add the two rectile states. So here we are. We'll pick rectile idle and add it and rectile fire and edit. Each one gets a new section in the FSI inspector along with its normal component inspector. Each state lists its transition points where we can select target states from the same local system. If we're ever unsure what a state does or what a spe specific transition point um, does, we can always use the doc string toggles to show the information we defined earlier in the code, which is pretty useful. Let's see each of the transition points uh, to the other state and check out the result in the game mode. So the idle state will transition to the fire state, and the fire state will transition back to the idle state. So in the game mode, as long as we hold down the mouse button, the rectangle will stay in the fire state. And when we release it, the idle state will take back over and the rectangle will decrease in size. Well, that pretty much gives a good general overview of the workflow utilized in, with Finite State Inspector. If you are using Finite State machines in your game, perhaps FSI can make a little things easier for you too. Thanks for checking out FSI and watching this tutorial.